So hello everyone, uh, this is chapter 10. We are going to talk about dynamic regression models and the learning objectives are inclusion of other information that might be also relevant within uh, our uh, time series. And so we have a, uh, a quick look at the effects of holidays, uh, competitive activity, changes in the law, the wider economy, these are all case studies, and other ex the use of other external variables. Uh, and in order to complete this uh, inclusion of information, we have a look at our extend ARIMA models to our analysis. So this may explain some of the historical variation that might lead to more accurate forecasts, to lead more to more uh, accurate forecasts. And so um, uh, can you hear my background noise? Maybe, yeah, give me a second. Okay, so um, the videos for, for this uh, chapter, uh, at least because I have uh, this, I spent some time on, uh, on this chapter, but they are very clear. So I warmly suggest to uh, have a look at the videos. I'm, I'm attempting a, a replication of the older things that they uh, clearly explain. Uh, and I like to make it a, a little bit shorter if it's possible. So basically in this chapter, the authors extend ARIMA models to include other information in a way that uh, um, uh, basically by allowing the errors from a regression to contain autocorrelation. Okay, we need to explain these things. And the resulting model as two uh, this way as two error terms with only the arima model error assumed to be the white noise what this means um okay so basically this is um our general model is like this so we have a y which is a response variable the intercept some coefficients some predictors and then usually uh so we have the this last term which is the error okay here what we are going to do is to adjust this um, error which in general should be like uh, so the error is the residual and we obtain this this value um by applying the difference between our observed value and our prediction, our estimates, more than prediction, our estimates. So the difference between these two um, is the error. Here, uh, what we want to do is to basically um, apply a model to this um, error. And we apply an ARIMA model. So basically, our model is our model, and we can even apply an ARIMA model. But then we also apply an ARIMA model to the error. So this will be uh, different uh, of a white noise. So basically, changing uh, behind a bit more like. It, it's going to be addressed. This this this, uh, this error is going to be modeled, and so in some sense, it address it to uh, I to to give it some to give it some um, so basically try to uh, identify uh, uh, the the behavior of this. Um, uh, 
residuals, basically. Okay, so uh, for this reason, we, we call it differently. So we had an epsilon, now we have an eta, I don't know how you call it, uh, T, sub T. And uh, this will follow an ARIMA model with um, um, P and Q, but also a difference. So this is the K thing, the, the, the main difference. And it is basically uh, named um, ARIMA for this reason, because this I, as you we have explained uh, uh, in the previous uh, uh, in sessions, it's basically the, um, uh, the, the, the difference within uh, the, the lag difference, okay, within um, uh, a period. Okay, so this, uh, this, this error, this uh, uh, amount of noise, which is initially a white noise, but we now attempt to address this white noise to, to, to be able to, to have an idea of what's really happening inside. You know that there is a, uh, the, the error itself can be split within some part of error that can be managed and another part of error that cannot be managed. So um, we, we are trying to, to do this basically, to uh, identify the shape or the, the, the trend of this, this, uh, this error by applying a model. Uh, and we apply a, an ARIMA model, okay? So a regression model with ARIMA error is equivalent to a regression model with differences with ARMA errors, okay? And now we are going to explain this little difference between an ARIMA model and an ARMA uh, model. And, um, okay, let's go forward, I can turn the page. Basically, what is the difference between an ARIMA model and an ARMA model? Uh, we know that the, the composition of this, the, the, the model name, uh, as, a, as a meaning. So AR is, uh, means autoregressive, MA means moving average, and the, this I in the middle between the two, and US, uh, Ricardo explained uh, beautifully, is the difference. So basically the difference between an ARMA model and a RIMA model is the difference. The difference in this case, if you want to, I don't know, add something more specifically, is the lag. So it's the difference between um, time period of the, the time series uh, that is cause of errors. And so we have, uh, we can see that the ARMA model, so as two components, the autoregressive, the moving edge, edge um, instead the ARIMA has also these components uh, of uh, the difference, which is called integration. Okay, so uh, ARIMA models works well on stationary data, whereas um, ARMA model without integration works well with stationary data while the ARIMA models work, works well with non-stationary data. Also, the, this integration component in the ARIMA model converts the uh, non-stationary in data into a stationary data. We, we have, these are all things that we have seen uh, previously, uh, but now we apply both. On a part of a model, we apply the ARIMA, and the other, uh, the other side of the model, uh, we apply the ARMA. So the ARMA model takes two parameters, as I said, P and Q, while the ARIMA uh, um, has also this uh, uh, D, which is the integration component. So they, they result are similar, almost similar, when uh, is the, and they are, uh, when the, uh, the integration or the difference is um, set to zero. Nothing new for now. 
So this is uh, uh, the, the case study, uh, one of the case studies, the first case studies that is presented in the chapter. So we load the um, uh, US change and then uh, um, uh, put on a um, um, vector consumption and income uh, so that we can see both of them uh, in the plot. So we have a consumption and income. So we like to see if the obviously one influence the other. Um, our time series is on a quarterly um, basis. And so we look at quarterly percentage of changes. Uh, first step is applying an ARIMA model without any sp other specification. So this is uh, auto ARIMA. So when we apply this, uh, the, the model uh, automatically selects the best uh, parameters, such as P and Q, um, and even uh, the, yeah, yeah. Jo just a comment. Uh, everything is is great, uh, uh, Federica, and it's good that you know we recap what we did from the previous chapters because this is just a continuation of those chapters from chapter seven. I only have one comment and it's from the video, from the from the author's video, is that we have seen this before, you know, this fitting in the US, uh, you know, um, metrics of consumption and income. We saw it in chapter seven, but instead of ARIMA, the function that we studied there was called TSLM, mm -hmm. okay? Time series linear model, okay? Mm -hmm. Like the LM, LM model from base R, okay, the, which is a, a, a linear regression, a, an OLS or ordinary. So now what we're doing is uh, instead of doing the TSSLM with that formula, consumption explained by income, now we are replacing it with ARIMA, mm -hmm. okay? So we are doing that regression, but instead of the regular regression, we're doing ARIMA and then ARIMA introduces the autoregressive and also the moving average component, okay? So we should get a better model than we did previously in chapter seven, okay? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so the um, uh, result of the uh, model selection uh, is uh, an ARIMA uh, 102. So P equals to one, D equals to zero, and Q equals Q2. Uh, as uh, mentioned uh, even very, very clearly in the, in the video, so we have an income, uh, the estimation of the income, uh, and the intercept. And so here we, we can see that we can uh, rebuild uh, the result of the model. So our equation, model equation, using the intercept, this value, 0.59, uh, plus the uh, our uh, coefficients that we have just estimated for the income, 0.19, uh, uh, 198 more or less, times the, the predictor plus the error. Now, the error, okay, as a, a model function as well, which is the uh, autoregressive one, uh, no point seventy, uh, um, with difference. Uh, so at the previous uh, on, at the previous um, period, a little error that cannot we change it and then the moving average of the error so we basically apply this coefficient to the level of error in a way that it goes forward or backwards depending on the uh, on the sign if it's positive or negative and finally uh, the the second moving average for the the uh, the error 
on the pol the on the, on the previous uh, this is p minus two. So basically, we are going back of two. A, a normal so the, in so as I said, the residuals or the er or model error so which is the difference between our observed values, uh, the response variable value that are observed. We are provided with this value. The difference of this value with our estimations release a certain amount, and this amount is the error. Here, we apply a model to this error, and so this model releases some coefficients that we apply to this error. So we have a part of this error can be, that can be addressed, and another part which cannot be modified. So we need to accept that the model will not be, won't be perfect anyway. Okay, so we cannot predict it exactly. But we hypothesize that is normally an independent distributed uh, with this uh, uh, parameters, mean zero and standard deviation. Uh, this is standard deviation of variance uh, um, 0.311, okay? Yeah, in, in, the, in the model, in the summary of the model, when you do the report, it's right there. It's sigma square, the variance, Sigma the square value. estimated as 0 0.3113. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the, you know, normal distrib independent distributed with a variance, with a variance of that, that number. Mm -hmm. well, so mean zero and variance uh, 0 0.311. Correct. Okay. So we apply this function residuals uh, on the model fit, which releases. Uh, these values, okay? So basically uh, here they uh, bind the rows in a way that you can see what is this, uh, the, the, the residuals. And we have the regression residuals and the ARIMA residuals. How they did it? Basically uh, on the model fit, the model fit is um, used as a main argument in the residual function, which basically doing the difference, okay? That's the difference. And release the residual uh, for the regression and for the innovation. So we have these two types. And the, the first one is ARMA without the innovation or the diff or so, uh, this is the, the D parameter. And this is the ARIMA residuals with type innovation. So they put these two uh, new vectors, they band it um, on a table and then create a new vector type with a factor, uh, assigning the type as a, as a factor and with these two levels so that we can basically visualize the two um, trends uh, with, the, with their names here, Re regression, uh, residuals, and ADIMA residuals. So what we see uh, within these two is that they, to me, looks quite similar. Yeah. Yeah. Re remember that this is a very simple model. Okay. You only have one extra regressor, which is the income. Okay. Uh -huh. So usually in a simple model, probably the regression, you know, uh, residuals and the ARIMA residuals, which are the innovation, probably will will, will be fair, fairly similar. Okay. Maybe you know just just a little bit in magnitude. But as you keep adding X regressors, extra regressors, then you will see the difference. Okay? okay. Because one is the errors for the regression, and the other ones is the error from the, the moving average uh, model. Okay. So as, as the model gets complex, 
then you will see a divergence, a, a divergence of the of those residuals. Mm -hmm. Because that, that looks quite quite exactly uh, quite the same. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe here, uh, here for example, um, is uh, one uh, the very beginning of the series, and here that can we see a little difference. Um, but then if you see here, it goes down to okay mm -hmm. less than minus two. Right. Yeah. So there's a little difference. Maybe that that would be nice to to see them on top of one on top of the each other, so mm -hmm. you can catch the differences like we. Right. Uh, yeah. Then if you use the GGT time series residuals function, uh, apply to the 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 model fit. Uh, we already seen this uh, application of this function, so. You can see this innovation residuals. This is the, the D parameter in the ARIMA model. So we can see uh, that is quite stationary. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any autoregressive. Yeah. If, uh, if, if, if it is one noise on that plot of the innovation residuals, what you have to see if if the values are you know up and down, but they center on zero, okay, you know to the mean to the mean of, of, of zero, and mm -hmm. as you can see, you know there's no drifting or there is no trend, uh, you know that suggests otherwise. So probably that will qualify as white noise. Okay, uh, as well as we don't. Uh, have uh, spikes um, outside of the ranges, so um, lag is uh, zero. Should be zero, isn't it? Uh, not, not, not significant because not there's lags, almost... there's okay. lags, but yeah. because they are within those boundaries, uh -huh. the, the the blue dot dot lines, they're the boundaries of significance. That means that those lags are not significant. In other words, yeah. they, they can be, you, you are right, they can be zero. Okay, okay. They, they, they could be zero, you know, depending on the, on the you know, on the, on the variance. If you see one lag that is a little bit above or below, you know, those dotted lines, then that qualifies a significant one. But if you have one or two, still, you know, the model is, is good. Okay, the okay. assumptions, you know, can be, can be, uh, uh, can be valid. Okay, but if you have a lot, then you know you have to revise your, you know, your, your model. Okay, then we see that it's normally distributed, quite normally distributed, um, and so this is the uh, little discussion about what the model is. And then if we uh, see uh, the prediction, okay, with the argument function. And so select uh, some uh, of the, um, select the innovation. We feature the innovation uh, applying the lean box uh, criteria uh, with degree of freedom of three with a lag of eight. And this is, uh, for me, it's a bit of like Y8. I don't know, Y8. Uh you, you can choose different lags, okay? okay? The book doesn't doesn't explain that. For example, in the video, the lag that they used was 12, <laughs> okay? Yeah. So you can use different lags. The thing is that the, the important thing is that the value, p-value of that the hypothesis should be greater than 0. 0. 0.05. Mm -hmm. So you can say that the, 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 the residuals are behaving uh, randomly, uh -huh. okay? That, that's the important thing, but you can choose, you know, different lags to see more or less, you know, okay. how, how the p-value, uh, you know, moves. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but they, they don't explain it. <laughs> they explain the, the degrees of freedom, though. Okay. Yeah. They explain the degrees the, of, the, of freedom, but not the not not the lags. <laughs> there is a, uh, one more case study after that that one, but we may go back to to that later. Yes, now I'd like to uh, have a look at the uh, predictions uh, and 
the if we uh, use new data, okay, uh, we stay on this uh, on this data set, and um, uh, we set new data, uh, uh, and then uh, um, so we use the income as the mean income. Uh, and then uh, we uh, yeah. Frederica, you have to add that income because remember you are going now to the future right okay mm -hmm. you you have the time series onto the last observation then you're going to the future so before with uh, with only arima you you only need to get the periods okay to the future if it was years a years if it's quarters like this a quarters okay two years but what happens is that because you are using income an extra regressor in the function you have also to give an uh, a, a, a value a value mm -hmm. of that predictor too okay yeah. so not only you have to give the period the number of periods for the forecast you also have to give the future uh values for that uh, regressor mm -hmm. and that's why they're using the mean they're using the average that we're going to you know uh continue with the average to the future Mm -hmm. to then predict consumption yeah <laughs> okay so and here we see that they expect about uh less than one uh so the, uh, as a as a um, uh, percentage of change um and it, it is within the this the um, 95 percent and 85 percent level uh, confidence. So these two are one eighty percent, ninety five percent of confidence interval level. Giriamo. Uh, okay. Yeah. So then uh, it's mentioned. It, this is very interesting. Uh, a very quick. Um, uh, into, um, so uh, basically intro about the difference uh, uh, between a sto stochastic and deterministic, between sto stochastic and deterministic trends. Um, basically, uh, here we can refer to, uh, again, we are um, talking about dynamics of the model. And so, this is the unexpected outcome, okay, that we cannot address with our model. And so uh, focus on the residuals and the error. And so again, in this case, we, we are uh, pointing the difference between stochastic and the deterministic trend of the, of the residuals, okay, so of the noise. And um, it is deterministic when we do not, uh, uh, so we basically, our parameters doesn't change in the future. So we set some parameters and we expect them to be the, as the same in the future. While it is stochastic, when uh, we basically, uh, our parameter changes, uh, we expect that, that uh, our starting point will change in the future because our parameters will change. And um, uh, we apply a probability when we talk about stochastic trends. And this probability uh, is an expected value of some, some of the parameters that we expect to uh, be uh, bounded within a certain range in the future. So uh, here we see a quick visualization of an application of the uh, ARIMA, the determin deterministic ARIMA, and application of stochastic ARIMA. Uh, here we see that the deterministic is, so we basically have a, a, a trend and our um, uh, PDQ uh, is equal to zero, our difference basically uh, is equal to zero, our lag. Uh, why it, within the stochastic model uh, we set it to one okay 
So here we expect no changes, and he, why here we expect changes within the one period. And the, in this visualization, we can see that one of, uh, um, so the bluish one, it's la, um, wider than the orange, uh, orangish one. Uh, and in fact, the, um, um, so, so uh, I think I, I don't have the, the legend. So, but basically, um the stochastic one is the the orange which is the uh, a bit more uh taking um I'm, I'm, i don't want to say something wrong um but uh, uh basically grab the it's able to grab changes within the models yeah i i think we're trying to say ferica is one of the models, the confidence, the confidence intervals are a little bit narrower, and, narrower and, yes. than the other model. Okay, the other model, you know, the confidence interval is a little bit wider. In other words, has more variance okay? yeah. than the than the other model. Uh, one thing to notice is that both of them are trying to model this time series, which is okay. non-stationary, right? Okay. Because it has a trend, right? You know, uh -huh. the, the airlines, this is the airlines uh, passenger uh, data set. Well, it, it has a trend because it's going up. What is, it doesn't uh -huh. have a seasonality, okay? So what they're doing here is instead of using ARIMA to difference, to change it to a stationary, they are using the trend component within that formula, okay? Uh -huh. So when you, they use the trend component, that converts it, that converts that, uh, modern into a deterministic because you're not using ARIMA to change it, okay? In the stochastic, stochastic model, is the same as the ARIMA that we have seen, which is that you difference to change it to a stationary and then do your, you know, you do, do your modeling that way. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I was just going back to uh, the book. Uh, because I, uh, okay, the model, the deterministic trend model is orange. So the orange is deterministic trend, while the stochastic trend is bluish. So the bluish thing, um, you, you see, can see my, uh, my notes. Right. Yeah. So the the bluish uh, is uh, um, which is stochastic. The, the variability uh, of this type of model is wider, so you can expect more to happen. While the other, the deterministic one, the uh, which is the opposite exactly of, of what I was saying, it's narrower. So the variability is narrower because uh, you specify. Uh, that something will uh, stay constant within time. So it, it doesn't foresee much outcome. Uh, yeah, so uh, what else? Uh, it's worth to mention. Ah, uh, finally, uh, this um, example of the dynamics. And uh, this is a nice visualization in the, in the video. Uh, he stops on, on each one to show the little differences. But overall, here you can see uh, all of them. Uh, this example is on Australia retail uh, data set. And so um, uh, we filtered the industry to be cafe restaurants and takeaway food services. And we focus on uh, months between 2004 and 2018. Uh, so then we summarize the turnover. And so we have a new um, data set focus on cafe from 2004 and 2018. And we apply, so this is the dynamics basically. So what's happened here is that we apply this k variable uh, with different values. Uh, 
uh, from one to six. Uh, obviously, this data set requires a bit of data adjustments. So in, uh, we, there is a transformation with the, with the log. But uh, uh, basically, the dynamics is this bit here. So the Fourier transformation with different uh, K uh, values. Okay, so what 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 the 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 you know the authors are doing here, uh, we have seen it before. Okay, in when we discuss seasonality, uh, to introduce a seasonal component. Okay, before uh, it, it was before we discussed Arima because Arima has a modification that is called Sarima to accommodate that that seasonal component, but here. We are not introducing in the Arima model. We're introducing the seasonality. We are we are introducing a Fourier series, so it's like a sinus a series to try to capture try to capture that seasonality. Okay, so mm -hmm. I, I, as 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 we did the trend in the in the previous uh, example, where instead of doing the difference, we added the trend component, you know, to get that, that trend over time. The same thing here, to capture the seasonality, okay, we uh, introduced the Fourier. The only thing that we, you have to tune it, the Fourier, because Fourier could have the K, the K who have different parameters. So now you are uh, experimenting with different values of K to try to see which is the best model that captures that seasonality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, the we vary k as the number of Fourier sine and, co and, and cosine uh, pairs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah because it, 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 the the Fourier series gives you two. Okay, if yeah. it is the sine and the cosine to capture the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Okay, the only thing that depending on the number you are going to get. That, that many pairs okay if you get if k is one you get two pairs if k is two you get four pairs etc mm -hmm. yeah in fact um the uh so i think the 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 uh, there is a model um the uh aic uh the the first one it's the lowest. So the let's say that this is the best. Uh, okay. Re re remember, this is negative values. Uh, yeah. So that one is the highest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. But this capture better. So they they are like uh, risk of uh, to be more a uh, bit more complicated. Right. What this can capture better the trend. Mm -hmm. So at some point in time, in future, in future time, while this can miss it easily, or, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, according to the AIC, the correct AIC, the best model is the last one, okay, okay. K6, because that's the lowest, that's the lowest, that, that that's the highest negative, which is the lowest number, okay? But if you want a simpler model, then simple. you have yeah. to go to a lower level of K. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a matter of, you know, trade-offs, okay? Maybe you don't want to be that precise, but you want a simple model so it runs faster, okay? So it's a, it's a trade-off. But the, the AIC, the, the lowest is that one, the, the K6. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I meant, uh, yeah, that, that what I wanted to say is, is that this is like uh, simpler and this is a bit more complicated. And, and right. I, my my opinion so, so what i thought is that this um, can be uh, like more valid as a, such as a type of model uh, compared to the others in some senses because they it's uh, you know more vague um, and so it check k6 africa because k6 this model the k1 you see the time series that it has some jagged, you know, points, you know, in between. And that mm -hmm. model is kind of smoothing, you know, that is more or smoother, right? In K6, you see that those wiggly lines are modeled in the forecast, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, those little spikes that you see, 
between the seasonality, uh, you see a model right there. Okay, so probably that's why the AIC corrected is giving you the lowest the lowest value there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, most you probably. Know, think, think, think about th think about this. Think about the uh, graph. If you put the graph, you put K, and you put the you know the values, and mm -hmm. you'll see that that value is going to be the lowest in K six. Yeah. You have to check if you keep uh, uh, you know increasing that K, mm -hmm. if fit then levels you know, to that point. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's um, a sort of like, you know, time series, you see that the trend uh, in the past, uh, it's always of a certain, um, with a set of a certain type. So you mm -hmm. expect this to be as the same as for the future. Yeah. That's the one that promises yeah. of forecasting. You know, past trends yeah. or past, you know, experiences will give you the future data, which is not always the case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, then finally, uh, there is um, the use of um, an, another predictor. For example, here we have the ins an insurance uh, data set where the insurance, uh, basically what does it is they want to uh, check whether they request for quotation um would increase with increasing tv adverts advertisements so if they do a bit more marketing uh, about requesting um uh, a quotation for 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 insurance for with their with their company um they 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 want to like basically see if this affected positively or or not so if they have more quotation or not if this vary based on on the money they spend on uh, on marketing basically and so here is a, a nice uh, data set uh, which compares uh, uh, the the values of the um, money spent in TV, in, uh, in marketing uh, within different um, lags so this is our the observed values this is within one period this is within two and the other said that you you can see that our data shows that there is a clear uh correlation so basically uh linear uh positive linear trend uh within uh the money spent on marketing and the number of quotation requests of for quotations uh, if we, um, this is nice uh, thinking. So if we basically look at one period uh, distance, um, so basically you do more marketing now, what's happened within one, uh, one, um, one period? Uh, what, what, one period. Yeah. Okay, you have to check the period. I yeah. don't know the period because I haven't checked that example. Uh, let me see per so month. Uh, the period is monthly. 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 Mm -hmm. So within one month, yes, within one month. Uh, and within one month, we can see that uh, there is still some uh, linear trend uh, uh, cor correlation within the two. But then if we then go... Uh, forward within two months and then three months they are not more uh, correlated anymore so okay. it might, might be worth paying for marketing because this uh, will affect the uh, the request for quotation this is the so one way to say this and this is usually what you expect is that oh, for yeah. example and i'm and i'm and i'm advertising today that I offer insurance quotes at low prices, uh, great customer service, whatever. So what he's saying here is that the effect of that ad today, the most uh, correlation with the number of quotes that I'm going to be receiving is immediate. In other words, it's going to be today, tomorrow, or uh, maybe a couple of days. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. After time passes, the effect of that ad that wanes. 
Right. Okay, and you can see it after two months, uh, you know, there's really no correlation <laughs> with the with the ad. So what what happens then? You have to keep, you know, doing ads. You cannot rely on only one. You have to keep doing ads. So then, you know, you keep people motivated to, uh, by by you know, get get a quote and, and probably buy a, buy, buy buy your product. <laughs> So that's why you have to keep, you know, advertising, really. <laughs> uh, yes, in fact, if I go here, can you see the book now? Yeah. So this is the um, uh, observed data. So we have the quotes and the TV, uh, the marketing. So we see that if the marketing increases as well as the quotes increase, so they they must have the same uh, more or less the same trend, yeah, yeah, up ups and down basically. Uh, and this uh, is um, uh, the model that is uh, it is applied uh, with. Um, Zero, uh, so uh, this is uh, the uh, Otarima. Is that right? Uh, and then it's a Rima, but you are not differencing. Uh, okay? okay, so you are putting D equal to zero. Yeah. Just you are letting the P and the Q then find the optimum one. Exactly, but. The, this uh, difference within the other models is that we add. Um, yeah. You have to add, add the lags of the previous. Okay. So, for example, in lag zero, you only have one lag, lag zero. In lag one, you're going to add lag one and lag zero. In lag two, lag two, lag one, and lag zero. And yeah. try to see the effect of, the, of those lags. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for three lines, I guess. Mm -hmm. We can see that the values here, uh, the AIC uh, with one lag is the lowest value, mm -hmm. but we see the centered as well as the same, the lowest. Um, and so there is a log link function because we use the log. What is it? No. no. Yeah, uh, it, it says that the lag one, the uh, model with the lag one, in other words, lag zero and lag one, is the is is the one with the smallest. AIC yeah. corrected. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, and so the best fit. So we look at the best, uh, the best fit, which is one, like one. So we have seen mm -hmm. this one here, which is this one here. So we use this. Um, uh, we can see more uh, specifically the uh, estimation of the uh, coefficients, the intercept, and the lag for the marketing and the, the marketing itself, which is positive. Uh, so the coefficient is positive. So if you increase the advancement, you're supposed to, to have uh, more quotation. Mm -hmm. and um, as well, there is a uh, ad, the, uh, these other parameters for the model error, for the noise that we apply to the model function for the for the noise as well, and then uh, the uh, with new data uh, we forecast and plot, and we see that this would be about. Uh, uh, 13 quotes, they expected to have 13 quotes, which is they, it's quite steady <laughs> mm -hmm. in eight, eight periods. So, 
13 uh, quotes based on uh, uh, eight adverbs. Excellent. So you have to see, you know, in terms of uh, uh, return investment, you have to see which is the point where you get the most uh, return depending on the on the, on the advertising. So probably you'll see, let's say, you know, let's start with six, uh, let's, let's start with seven, eight, nine, or 10. Okay, so you'll have an idea from how does it, you know, behaves, your, your forecasting, which is the point where you're getting the most, the, the, the most out of your advertising uh, units. Yeah, yeah that, that's more of a sensitivity uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. And um, this is for uh, 2006. So what is the, the, the lag is just two. Okay, so new data, we set it to 20. Uh, because these are eight are uh, the um uh, the the advert future advertising are set to eight. Right. Yeah, you, you have to give it because that's your external regressor. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you can change it. You can do eight, you can do seven, you can do nine, you can do ten. So depending on the results of your forecast, let's say for example, if you get nine and you get the same. The mm -hmm. same forecast, you know, within those confidence intervals. That means that you are spending one more unit and you're not getting anything back. Okay. And let's mm -hmm. say that in seven, you get pretty close to what you are getting to eight. So now seven is the sweet spot now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to do that sensitivity analysis to see how much many units I'm advertising, what I'm getting when getting back in quotes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I can decide, okay, I'm, I'm going for, let's say, uh, seven. Okay, because it will give you basically the same, same thing as eight. But yeah, that analysis but... has to be done. Uh -huh. Right, okay. because uh, you, if you do, you, you pay for eight, and mm -hmm. then you're saying like 13. Then it, the, the next month you have still 13 and you still have paid eight, but then you uh, increase just of less than one so that there is a little increase the very little yeah uh, you you have to do that analysis before okay before you come in you have to do that analysis okay uh try from six to ten <laughs> and see the forecast you know you you just do a table right six seven eight nine ten this is my forecast okay am i getting the same return at eight that on seven so that means that seven gives me more than, mm -hmm. than eight Okay, yeah. I don't have to go to eight. Now, let's see if seven gives me less. Okay, now I have to see, you know, if I go seven, if I, if I go eight, depending on my, you know, my capacity, right, mm -hmm. for, for advertising. So that, that's, that's usually the use of, of these tools to do kind of a sensitive analysis and then tell management, okay, me, management, if you do eight, this is what we expect. If you do seven, this is what we expect. But, but, but you know, uh, you know, notice, that in seven, if we get more or less the same amount, that means that you don't have to go to eight. You can go seven, okay? You know, to get the most of your advertising uh, budget dollars. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, I don't know if you want to, so I think this is the chapter and mm -hmm. then the exercises. Okay. So let me see. That would be that would be interesting to do that that analysis. Mm. Let, let's do that, uh, 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 Federica. Okay, uh, okay. let's let's do that that advertising and quotes, and let's try uh, running uh, with different advertising units. Okay, let's mm -hmm. say from six to ten, and if we can do like a table, and maybe you can do a heat map. Okay, a table on where is the point where we don't get that many quotes okay because of because of the model okay so what, what would be the sweet spot between seven and ten for the next one okay, okay. Exactly. I, I think that would be a good uh, a, a, an interesting you know application yeah. 
you know, to the to, to this forecasting, you know, uh, theory. Okay. 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 Yeah. Let, 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 let's do that. And then, you know, we'll, uh, we'll keep going to 11, which is her, uh, forecasting hierarchical and groups. <laughs> yeah. and now we're getting into, you know, into major leagues, into the major leagues. Okay. Because that, that's group, uh, you know, group forecasting. You're going to forecast uh, thousands of time series. <laughs> okay. Not just one, not just one. <laughs> okay. Let me do the end.